Um, is there any reason to have the zoom on? Sorry? Any reason to have the zoom on? Not for our case. Okay. All right, Your Honor. Ours is <clears throat> plugged in and at least according to what I'm seeing operational. I don't know what the court sees. They just changed all this, so. Is it a different HDMI? Is it some, both the TVs are on HDMI 1. Um, I'll tell you in just a sec. There you go. Yep, there we go. That's us. Yeah, we, we actually turned the zoom off to, yeah. Okay, so we're good. This side is good, yes, Rob. And then all I have to do is switch to... All right, we're good. I'm just going to leave it like that for now. And I'm going to turn my computer off for now. Um, And then on the instructions, And I'm assuming this is going to be done today. Yes, sir. Did you get the file? Or she went to get it? She went to get file. Okay. Yes. So on here it says that the in the jury instruction it says driving under the influence first offense. The charge is operate actually operating motor vehicle oh, under the influence of alcohol first offense. Um so I think we need to say it the way it's statutorily. Larry, who do you have with you today? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. This is uh, Samina Hitch. She is our newest associate. Samia? Samina. Samina, hi. Nice to meet you. I'm sorry, Samina. I could have sworn we introduced her last time, but it could have, I forgot, I don't remember. Um, she remembers you, Your yeah. Honor. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Well, well you, you were in and out of her room, so that's why. But yes, she's our newest associate. Licensed in Kentucky and in Indiana. Good for you. Well, almost licensed in Kentucky. We're working on that project. It's a long story. 
Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Okay. Um, how many copies of uh, defense instructions do I need? Do you have a copy of it? I have an electronic Okay. I'm just going to make two of them. All right. Um, your copy. Thank you, Your Honor. You're welcome. Um, Matt, do you have a chance to go over instruction two? Do you have any objection to it? Um, hold on, let me pull up the list to see what Take your time, man. Sorry, I thought you already did it. Okay, so we have the comments. And I, I would address that whenever I check not the court ready. Okay. So we are, I have both of your instructions, and let's get us on the record. I mean, we've been on record all this time, but I'm going back to... So... I don't know if any of you have ever seen how, what we're doing up here while you all are having hearing or anything, but I'm going to show you. So in this program, um, when we have hearings, probable cause hearings, ju jury trials, bench trials, we can go in and choose what the event is and we start logging and making a log. And so as you make a motion or there's an objection or whatever, I can create this log. So if later you go back and ask for a copy, you always need to ask for the judge's log because otherwise they're just gonna give you the disc and you're not gonna get the log. But if you get the log, you're gonna be able to know exactly where everything happened. It'll show you the time, like when the officer starts testifying, I'll label, you know, like the witness, I'll put his name in and all that. So I'm making a record, like a good record <laughs> as you're going. So a lot of people, I just was told the other day, like somebody who's been a lawyer for 20 years had no idea to ask for that. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> and, and not all the judges do it, but we're all supposed to do it. That's why we have this, that's why we have jabs. It's because it creates a real log. See, now I'm afraid to ask us a judge maybe who doesn't do it. And I ask for the log and there's one entry, jury trial started. <laughs> and, yeah, so, but that's, but I do it. So if you have a probable cause hearing in front of me or any, any hearing in front of me, a competency <coughs> hearing, all of that will be there. Mm -hmm. And your, your motions, your rulings, when somebody starts, so you won't have to be looking like yourself to find the timestamps and all that. Got it, thank, thank you. you. All right. So, <coughs> All right, so let's address the. Um, yeah, yeah, just hang out in the jury box. Samina's going to be with us the whole trial, Your Honor. Okay. And she can sit up here with you if you would like. Okay. You can get another chair or however you want to do it. I think she's going to have the best seat in the house. If I remember correctly, I believe it's this one where you can see both the jury and the witness and all parties. However you want to do it. Yeah. <clears throat>
so let's address the jury instructions. So I have both parties proposed jury instructions, and I think for the most part <coughs> there is an agreement uh, with respect to... I think we can address the easy one first, okay. which is our instruction number three defendant's testimony just needs to be added in there. Yeah, um, I didn't include it because I wasn't sure if he would testify or not, but I, I can add that into it. Okay, so instructions two will be added. Um, no, no, no. Instruction three, yeah, Your Honor. Instruction two, I think Matt has an objection. Yeah, I just have that too. So, are you. So, we're talking about um, definitions, basically. So, on the presumption of, let's go through presumption of innocence. We agree on that, right? Everybody's good with that? Yes. Yes, Your Honor. On the Commonwealth's version. And then on. I imagine it's probably the same. On the, similar, not the same. Well, they don't. The Commonwealth doesn't have the burden to improve instruction. That's instruction two. Right. So instruction one the for the defense reads, the law presumes Jeffrey Edwards to be innocent of the crime and that the criminal complaint shall not be considered as evidence or having any weight against him. Mm -hmm. You shall find Jeffrey Edwards not guilty unless you are satisfied from the evidence alone and beyond a reasonable doubt that he is guilty. If upon the whole case you have a reasonable doubt as to his guilt, then you shall find him not guilty. Is that what the prosecution has? If upon the whole case you have a reasonable doubt. Yeah. When Hitler says if upon the whole case you have a reasonable <laughs> doubt that the defendant is guilty. It's worded a little bit different in both of yours, but yes, then you should found him not guilty. Are you, what, yours is a little different than theirs. Uh, if you have reasonable doubt as to his guilt versus if you have reasonable doubt if he is guilty, I, I think they're synonymous for the most part, yeah. Your Honor. I have no preference. I like the... Um, I like the... If the defendant... If you have reasonable doubt as to his guilt, then you shall find him not guilty. I don't like the on the chart like, of a charge on that charge. Okay. So that. Okay. Then on defense instruction number two, the burden of proof, <clears throat> um, <coughs> I would just ask that that be left out simply because I think that that beyond reasonable doubt burden is clearly stated in our proposed jury instructions, which are essentially copied straight from Cooper's, um, I think at two different points, both on the, um, the actual instruction and then the presumption of innocence that mentions the burden of proof. And I, I do think the wording of the defense proposed instruction number two is a little bit confusing, especially in the minds of the jury, perhaps, and broaches <coughs> the finding reasonable doubt. And it's also redundant. So for those reasons, I would just ask that it not be included. Ms. Warren. Um, I'm sorry, I, I must have missed where we're trying to define reasonable doubt because... What? I don't... Instruction to burden of proof is what he's objecting to. Yes, and, and okay, so I'll just address the issues in turn, Your Honor. Um, this instruction is a guide to the jury. The, the only reason we have included that instruction there in the first place is to do the complete opposite of what the Commonwealth is suggesting. We're here to guide the process and guide the jury and make their job as easy as possible. By virtue of this instruction, which reads, the burden of proof in this case rests entirely upon the Commonwealth, which is a true statement, from the beginning to the end of the trial, to establish, beyond a reasonable doubt, every element essential to the conviction of Jeffrey Edwards of the offense charge. And the two elements are driving and intoxication. Jeffrey Edwards has no burden to sustain as to any of the essential elements of the charged offenses, and the burden never shifts to the defendant at any point during the trial. I've had issues with jurors coming back with questions sometimes, asking, well, uh, so-and-so didn't testify, the defendant didn't testify, uh, and something else happens similar to that that confuses them, so we figured this instruction had solves that problem. Uh, because now they know the burden never shifts, they know that the burden is on the Commonwealth, they know that it's, again, reasonable doubt, but I, I, I think the Commonwealth argued at one point uh, just a few moments ago that we're trying to define reasonable doubt, but I failed to see that. 
in my language was that it broaches upon defining. I would say it did define it. I, I just think it's not something that's included in the Cooper standard jury instructions. I think it has the potential to potentially uh, confuse the jury or create more questions, especially the language if, uh, let me find it. Jeffrey Edwards has no burden to sustain as to any of the essential elements. I, I'm not disagreeing that that's a correct statement of law. However, I think in a, if a juror reading that sentence, I had to think about what that meant, and I'm an attorney for a little bit. I, I think a jury might read that and just be kind of confused by it. And again, the reasonable doubt burden of proof is addressed in our instructions at multiple other points. So I don't think there would be any doubt in the jurors' minds as to what the burden of proof is. What if we change the sentence to read, Jeffrey Edwards has no burden uh, during the course of this trial, and the burden does not shift to the defendant at any point to make it simpler language. I have no problem with that. Again, I would just ask we use the Cooper's instructions. I, I don't think it's necessary to put this in there. I understand his position. I, I, I agree that we use the Cooper instruction. I think you can address this in your body. Okay. In, in the event that it becomes too murky to your body, I will also instruct them. I mean, obviously, when I'm giving them direction that if, if it becomes a problem. Yes, Your Honor. But, um, so are we striking it in full, or is yes. there any language that... Okay. I'm, I'm going to strike it in full, and if you want to use Cooper's, you can... Hmm. Okay, so we will have four. Presumption of innocence, defendant's testimony, uh, operating motor vehicle under the influence, and unanimous verdict. Is that correct? So the defendant is not compelled to testify. Did not, it's all true. The did not testify. You cannot be used in this field. Yep, we're going to add that one. And then... Not guilty of robbery. We're going to have to leave the evidence the following. What do you mean? People over there. <laughs> wow. Okay. And that is not a joke. That was honestly a joke. Okay. We have 29. You need 25? Yeah. See, I've got 25. Sweet. Okay. Not going. Whenever you're ready, Judge, I have to Or a second reroll. <laughs> okay. Never had that happen in Jefferson County in 11 years. All right. See, surprisingly, it's a problem. Since COVID? <laughs> yeah. Makes sense. I mean, the demographic consists well, of... Well, the legislature is making it more of a problem because they're going to say if you're 70 or over, you don't have to do it. Oh, is that uh, in yep. the process? Thank yeah, you. they just passed that. Thank you. Just one question. Is there a BA reading? No, Your Honor. Okay. All right, you may bring it in. 